Michael Irvin is joining us as he does every single Wednesday at this time. Brought to you by driveway.com. Looking for a car? Go to driveway.com where you can get pre qualified, buy a car, and get it delivered. Good morning, Mike. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> that was good, man. That was good. <laughs> Dude, now, you know, I had to go research and study. I said, what did, did they ever make Rush Hour 4? It was such a great movie. And you find out that they, 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 they did start it. I think some came up with Chris Tucker or it's money, some whatever. But it, it was in pre-production, and they never they never completed it. It never hit the big screen. It was a perfect, a perfect lead-in to what I wanted to play. Cooper Rush made Rush Hour 4, winning number four. Man, what 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 excitement we have around here. And I heard you guys talking about these Cowboys apologies. Yeah. We owe everybody apology. And and I also heard the other day like when I was coming to my workout, you guys talking about and, and I didn't see that and I want you to elaborate for me. Amari Cooper, they said he 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 he, he well, I don't want to use a strong word, but quit. Yeah, I heard Michael Lombardi talking about him checking out. I don't have the full story, but apparently he checked out of the final Cleveland drive the other day. Why do we now, and, and that's what I wanted, I'm glad you said it again, Sean. Wait, if you check out, is that not quitting? Or is quitting not check, How is that? You see what I mean? Cause yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm just because only, only bring this, of course, I, I, I have no no odd against Amari Cooper, but we, we've been checking on all the guys that left. And, and, yeah. and I said to myself, man, we just had Amari. We could be this or we could be that. I no doubt said that, even though I had heard something like this before yeah. from somebody, and that's when I told y'all, okay, I'm on board. So I just found that to be interesting. Yes, uh, I'm sure you did. Yes, I I'm did. sure yeah, you did. Yeah, I did. Because <laughs> I did, I did, I did. I've been back and forth with it. Like, I don't ain't no man. Hey, hey. After that week one, I was like, man, okay, what he was. We need him back. Yeah. <laughs> we needed him. But, you know, now, okay, yeah, I, I just see. So may, maybe I kind of owe him an apology to him. Mike, I'm not a superstition guy. Like, I don't believe in, you know, jinxes and all this crap of mentioning a no-hitter. I think it's a bunch of BS. But I know a lot of people believe in it, and there's a lot of people who want to keep this mojo going. Did you did you believe in that type of – the mojo with Cooper Rush? It doesn't matter we score 20 or he throws for 100 yards. You know, RJ and I believe that Dak should play when he's ready. H how much of a factor is this in a locker room? Like, if I took an anonymous poll, would there be 30 or 40% of the locker room who who say, let's just keep this going until we lose? Well, uh, you, you, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. If Cooper Rush had been throwing for 250 yards, 220, and 220 yards, you know what I'm saying? Something up in there. But when you're throwing for 100 yards, everybody's saying, wait a minute. We're up parking with really good with the quarterback. Sooner or later, they're going to, you're, you're going to have to win a game. You're going, you're going to have to make a play. Yeah. You're not going to beat those elite teams throwing for you You're not – even if you get – you're not beating the Kansas City Chiefs. You're not mm -hmm. beating the Buffalo Bills. You're not beating those teams throwing for 100 yards. You're just not going to do it. So, so, so that's what is, that's what's right now. Because now, what those guys in locker room have to be saying, man, with this defense, yeah. and, 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 and we can get a running game going, and we can get some more stuff going in the offense, oh, my, we'd be unstoppable. We can be unstoppable. But if Cooper Rush had been throwing averaging 220, 30, 40, 50 yards, Boy, this is a boy. Hey, this is a whole different story. Mike, who's the best defense that you ever faced, and how far away are the Cowboys from 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 getting into a fun discussion about them being great? Well, they're close. They're close, and I talked about this early. That you need that one special unit, either that one special unit, uh, offensively, defensively, or special team, or that one special unit within a unit like mm. that pass rush on that defense. That's one special unit yeah. within a unit that is, mm, mm, mm. And, and, and when I when, when I was pulling out that finger licking good thing a couple weeks ago, <laughs> you know, I was saying, this, this gave us a chance. This right here. Coach Sean, you guys, right, RJ, I, I had capitulated the East. I had given, I mean, we can get in with the wild card. I had really basically deep down in my mm. heart given the East to the Eagles. With the way they look, we were going to have to battle with, without our starting quarterback for six to eight weeks. It, okay, I ain't saying the season was over. Right. 
but but I gave each to the Eagles. Now mm-hmm. now now that 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 is back in the battlefield and back on play, and we'll get a good look at it this week. And even if the Cowboys come on the short end of this, you know what I mean? Because let me tell you, uh, this it, it, it ain't even about the talent on this team or the talent in Philadelphia this Sunday night. The Cowboys. I want to see if that man enough to deal with that environment. That's going to be a playoff environment, and you ain't never seen nothing as hostile mm-hmm. as this be, as in, in, in your life. And I want to see if they can handle that. If they can handle that, they can handle that. I, I, I feel a whole lot better about this year's playoffs being something different. Is there a weakness on this defense? I, I, think, I, think, I think if, if – if, if you if you go run right at them now, I don't want to say that too loud because <laughs> I don't want too many people to know it. But what you always did is great pass. When we get teams with great pass rushes, you try to bludgeon them. Go right at them. Go right at them. They just want to run back in and get to the quarterback. Let's keep busting them in the mouth and see how that slows down. You know what I mean? Yeah. But 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 that's why it's important. That's why it's important. I keep saying, Cooper, you got to start fast. You got to start fast. Go move the ball. Go get a seven points. Go get something so they will be put in a place to uh, have to throw the ball. I'm worried about this. Cooper Cup is all they had last week. This week, they got two pretty good receivers. Yeah. And the Cowboys got to figure out how to stop both of them. Michael Irvin on the Diamond Factory hotline here on Sean and RJ. What do you do with Micah in this game against Hurts? With all this talk about spying, uh, how, how do you see this matching up X's and O's wise, and 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 what would you do with Micah? Now I'm gonna do what I've been doing with Micah. You know, right now, right now, you heard with Sherry, uh, uh, the coach said up there, you know, trying to say Nick Sherry, Sherry, yeah, Sherry. <laughs> what he said is, we're going to account for Micah on every snap. Everybody will know what Michael Parsons is. <laughs> Everybody knew. Where, where Jason was on Friday the 13th. Everybody knew what Freddie Cooper was. He was right there in your seat. But you still got caught by them, didn't you? You still got killed by, uh, by Jason. We always know where the scary dude is. It doesn't matter, though, because he still comes to scare you. Hey, man, Michael Parsons, just, dude, and, and, and I was just working out, and we talking, talking to some guys. The dude's like, man, this is Michael team. This is Michael Parsons team. This is my, my, Michael Parsons sets the pace. But everything on that defense, man, and it's been it's been fascinating, incredible, and something beautiful to watch. And I'm a t- and this is the scary part. I, I I don't think we've seen, but about sixty percent of what he ultimately will be. I'm telling you, this dude's still learning, and he's still growing, and he'll still get better. I don't know if Jerry Jones is gonna have enough money, and if he ever says <laughs> right, if he said right now. We should start talking about my money. Y'all better get in there and start having a conversation. Don't be tripping on this right here. I don't want to hear that. We go keep. We need Michael Parsons. I don't care what you do. You got to keep him on the field. Because he's going to want to get paid like a linebacker and an edge, right? He, 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 that, that's that's going to be $40 million. $40 million. Mm-hmm. And you better go find it. Go find it. <laughs> yeah. and get him on the field. That's all I know. I don't want to hear none of that. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do. Michael, you better go find it. My, Michael, I know last year and in years past, like the attitude, the toughness has sometimes bothered you uh, with right. this team. Do you feel like it's different? It They look like they beat the Rams' ass and that they are not right. going to get bullied and pushed around as much like they did against San Francisco. Do you feel like that aspect is different? And you know what, Sean? That, that, there's where the apology lies. Yeah. There's where the apology lies. You hit the nail on the head. And, and I... Uh, I talked about when I'm talking to Stephen Jones, I'm about, wait a minute, man. Stop looking at talent. Let's look at personality. Let's look at the type of dudes we're bringing in. Since it's a skill in a wheel requirement in the National Football League, this is not some job that you have in front of a computer where it's only your skill. You got to measure will. So go get them dudes with them strong wills that don't want to lose, don't know how to lose. And if they lose, they start a damn fight. That's what I want. I want somebody fighting somebody, doing something. I want to know that it bothers you so bad. And that's it. And we got some of those guys. Like we talked about this before. The Tyler Smiths come in. These guys come in with a different attitude. And yeah, uh, Michael Parsons has been that guy. I told you, we need, we need more of those guys. We need more guys that we're saying, and Michael's not, not, not depleted of any talent. 
but I'll take a little less. Tyler Smith, he was going, well, he's rough around the edge, all this, but he got some fight in him. He has some fight in him. I heard you guys talking about his interview when he, when he did that interview. How well he does in the interview. He does do a job. I'm going to have him on my podcast here. Um, oh. He does such a great job, man. I love talking to him. He's such a good dude. But, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's about those attitudes and we got, we got better players around here that's not going to sit still and just let you hit them in the damn mouth and be talking about, okay, that's okay. You want to hit me again? We got some real dudes now. <laughs> hey, last – You know, because you remember a couple years ago when, that, when they had that Oprah Winfrey defense giving up for everybody 40 points, 40 points, 40 points, 40 points. You think Michael – you think Michael be okay with that? Right. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? He's that's a dog. What I'm talking about. He's a dog. He's a dog, man. He ain't going to be going with that, man. That's what we need them do. Yeah. That's when RJ was spying on you and Steven at Nobu in Malibu that hearing was. hearing the Micah yep. Ray Lewis comparisons attitude wise, and it has come to one hundred percent fruition. All right, last week you were very passionate. The topic of the week was Tua. This week it's the quarterback hits and whether we've gone overboard. What's your take on that topic? Yeah, yeah, we, we absolutely have gone overboard. But because of us going overboard, they have gone overboard. I keep telling you, you know, we're in we're in the Hall of Fame room, oh, and we were talking the Nisky luncheon this last uh, this last uh, Hall of Fame. We we're talking about trying to help some of the brothers that are having some struggles, Hall of Fame brothers, and we wanted to go to the NFL to talk about some things that the NFL should be doing to help. I said, wait a minute, guys, why don't we do both? We got a right hand and a left hand. And I said, I, I, I'll, I'll start it right now. I can write a check right now. Because these guys were getting pensions, a couple hundred dollars. I said, man, come on, man. We can put some money in together right now. We always talk about we're the same team. We're brothers. We're brothers forever. Let's help out these families. I just start this check right now. We can't, you, we can't go bully these owners. We got to make sure we get these guys on here to help us. And the best way to do it, the best way to do it is let us go help and then let somebody talk to the media. And then the media... So the media puts it out there. And then the NFL will listen because they only listen when they get back. That's the only time you make those 32 uh, uh, mafia guys come out of their court and start talking to you <laughs> when they get bad press. You see, so you get them some bad press, and then it's out there. They can help us that way. That's the same situation with this. When Tua went down, all that bad press, oh, my God, oh, my God, I didn't, didn't even get a flag on that call. Yeah. We didn't even get a flag. You, I guarantee somebody said, when you see this, you call a flag. You call a flag when you see some throwing him down. Now, you know, we went back and forth. They graded forcefully, forcefully threw him down. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And the only thing that saved Tom Brady was he put his arm out, or he would have gotten knocked out just like Tua. The NFL don't want to see somebody mm-hmm. getting slung down like that and, and getting pe- and knocked out and nobody throw a flag. I think they said, let's throw that flag if you see something going like this. Michael, real quick, what will and what should happen to Devontae Adams for pushing down I, the cameraman? I, 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 listen, listen, you, you find Devontae Adams, $50,000. Devontae Adams is going to have to give cameraman $50,000, and we move on. Let's stop it. Let's stop this, man. Come <laughs> on, man. Dude, first of all, ain't, 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 I almost cursed. Ain't nothing wrong with that dude. You know ain't that happening here. What are you going to the damn hospital for? Man, get your butt up, man. You feel harder than that running your butt down trying to get a picture of a football game. Let's stop. Let's stop, man. You know, dude, dude, you want to make some money. Just call Devontae and say, man, why? And, 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 and there's such things that we understand as football players called nuisance value. There's a nuisance value. Mm. I, I, so, 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 so there's a nuisance value to this for Devontae. You call him and say, hey, man, I don't want to go through this. If I got to go to lawyer calls, go to all uh, court and all that. Why don't you give me $50,000 we can forget it? Yeah, write a check for $50,000 because it's a nuisance value. He doesn't want to deal with it. He don't want to have to go write a $10,000 check of a retainer for a lawyer and just let them jokers get on the clock. Because once them jokers get on the clock, <laughs> it's crazy. You can't get them off the clock. <laughs> don't, ever think, don't ever think you can give a lawyer a retainer. <laughs> And he's going to give you something back. <laughs> Don't even think that. Don't even think that ever. In all my years, and y'all know I have dealt with me some lawyers, I ain't <laughs> never got no retainer back. I ain't never got a dime back from a retainer. Oh, my so, God. So oh you, my try God. To, you try to get it out the way on the front end. 
Fire on Monday, fire today. It'll be fire this weekend for the heavyweight fight Sunday night. Thank you, brother. This was awesome. Have a good one. No, that thing will be so, oh, my God. I'm even thinking about going Sunday night, right? Ooh. The only thing, I would have to have a drive back. I have to drive back to New York for first take. And and it's a two-hour drive. I already have my secretary marked it out. It's a two-hour drive. So say the game ends at, what, 12, 11, 11, 30? Yeah. Wait, 11, 30, 12. East Coast time. Now I got to drive back there to NB back up at five for the show oh. and be expected. That's, that's, that's going to be a big one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big one. <laughs> so I'm still contemplating it right now. You know what I mean? But, but yeah, it's going to be a fire, man. It's going to be a fire. Yeah.